Hey there, welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flearn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we are showing you how to change the background color of any image in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Now the first thing we need to do is select our subject because we don't want to wind up affecting our subject, we just want to affect the background. So we're going to make a selection out of our subject and use that for a layer mask. So let's go up here to the select menu up here at the very top. We're going to go to select and then down to subject. There we go. Now you can see these little dots right around our subject. Our subject's perfectly selected. This is incredibly easy to do. Once that's selected, we're going to go ahead and create our solid color fill layer. So let's go up here to the layer menu and we're going to go down to where it says new fill layer. Okay. Then we're going to go right to where it says solid color. Let's go ahead and hit OK and you can choose your color. We'll just start off with a blue. Okay. Now, as you can see, it did color that area, but it's actually the exact opposite of what we want. No big deal. If this ever happens, all you have to do is invert your layer mask. So right here we have our layers. You can see our background layer, and then here we have our fill layer with the blue, and then here we have the layer mask. So I'm gonna click here on the mask itself, and you can see the little white rectangle around the mask letting you know it's selected. Now all we have to do is invert that mask. You can do so by hitting Control or Command I or going to Image, down to Adjustments, and over here to Invert. There we go. And you can see already it looks really good. So because we just have a regular fill layer, the blue just looks very flat. It's not interacting with the background at all. So what we have to do now is change the blending mode of that fill layer to have it actually interact with the background. So our blending modes are located right up here above your layers. And by default, it's going to say normal. Now you don't have to know all of these blend modes. There are a lot of these, but as I scroll through them, you can see it starts to interact with my background a little bit different. So basically you just want to kind of go right down through them until you get something that you actually like. There we go. Now, most of the time for this sort of effect, I'm going to use the multiply blend mode or darken. Let's stick with multiply for now. The cool thing here is basically all of our work is done. All I have to do is change the color of my solid color fill layer. So here's my solid color fill layer. I'm just going to double click right here and then I have a color picker. Now, as I change my color here in my color picker, it's going to see automatically updating my background colors. We're going to go with a light color like that and hit OK and there we go. It's as easy as that. Now, if you want to create a few different options, all you have to do is duplicate this layer. So I'm going to click right here on my solid color fill layer. Just make sure it's selected. We're going to hit Control or Command J, and that's going to duplicate it. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the original one off. Double click here, and then I can simply change my color just by moving around my color picker. We hit OK, and there we have multiple options. Now, you can even mix and match and do all kinds of funny things with these if you'd like. For instance, I'm going to hit Control or Command G right here on this green layer, Control or Command G, and then I could put a layer mask on this. I'm going to grab my gradient tool. So that's G for the gradient tool, or you can simply click right there. We're going to click right up here on our gradient editor, and I'm going to make sure it says foreground to transparent, which is located here in the basic adjustments right here, foreground to transparent. That's it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gradient from the top to the bottom. And this way we can actually have two colors on our background. Check it out. All you have to do is simply click right up here and drag down. There we go. Something like that. And then I can just change my color. So you can see my uh, magenta is visible at the top. It looks kind of gray on the bottom. And the reason is that is green and magenta are complementary colors. And so the green is kind of canceling the magenta out because they're blending together. So if I just double click right here on the green and I change that to like a blue or a different color, something like this, maybe like a deep dark red, we can actually start to get more interesting effects because they are actually blending together. Let's just double click there. We'll make it a little bit lighter. And here we can see we have an interesting effect. And of course, at any time, if you want to, you can change this blend mode. Right now, we set it to multiply, but let's go ahead and go through a few different ones. Ooh, color burn actually looks pretty good. So all of these are available to you at any time. Actually, that lighten looks really cool, and we're getting some, kind of like a really nice pastel look here. So let's go ahead and take a look at our before and after. You're going to see just how easy this is. 
So I'm back in Photoshop. I just want to group all of these layers together. So let's shift click all of those and I'm going to hit Control or Command G. That groups all of them together. So we have my background and we have a group here. I'm just going to call this color. There we go. And all I have to do is click on this little eyeball here to turn it off and on to see the before and after. So here we go. There's the before and the after. Incredibly simple, easy to do, and you can create unlimited variations. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget you can download this sample PSD and image on Flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. It's completely free. If you want to get more videos from Flurn, hit that subscribe button, give us a big like, and send us a comment of what you'd like to see next. Thanks so much and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.